How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to show you the many, many different ways that I save money. On my previous videos, whenever I show that I spent a very low amount, you will always have someone out there, probably a student or something saying, okay, they only pay uh, $500 a month in total. So therefore uh, they beat me in terms of how low they can spend. The thing is, number one, I feel like you should not try to compete with another person because everybody's living situation is different. The second thing is that I am not striving, you know, racing to the bottom here with minimum quality of life. I'm trying to have a, you know, fairly good quality of life while spending very little. So there's a balance here. You could, you know, get a very low cost per month just by being homeless. Therefore, you don't have anywhere where to live. You don't have to pay utility bills. Oh, all of a sudden you only need to spend like $200. You only need to buy food, but then you're living in a tent outside somewhere. When I go over the ways I save over here, keep in mind that I'm trying to obtain a certain product or service without paying for it and still getting most of the benefits here. So for example, I am going to turn off these lights over here and now I'm not going to have to pay for it while making this video. Nah, just kidding. I need the lights on in order to make good quality videos because when they're down, you see a lot of grainy noises in them. And I mean, they're only on for a short period of time anyway. So for you guys, I made up this brand new cost of living Excel spreadsheet over here, detailing some of the things that I did not talk about before. And the things that I talk about before, I'm just going to brush over them a little bit faster. The first one is housing. Not everyone is going to own their own home. Therefore your housing situation is different. But I estimate that if I were to go out there right now and rent a room in another house, okay? This is probably a cost effective way to do it rather than uh, rent a studio or rent a one bedroom. So it's gonna be a room in a house. I'm gonna be sharing uh, probably the kitchen or something. So it's gonna be roughly around uh, $1,200 versus what I'm paying right now, which is about $411 for property tax and HOA. And I account for the home repair maintenance to be about $30 every single month. Now, this is based on my past 10 years or so of expenditure because I did need to fix my hot water heater. I did need to replace my roof and all these things averaged out, you know, on a monthly cost is around $30 because I don't go around trying to repair every single thing that looks like it needs repairing. I tend to use things until they're completely dead. So, you know, things might look a little beat up and uh, usually for plumbing stuff, I work on those myself. So it's only the cost of the thing. And then I just spend time repairing. I know I had a, a mains break one time and all this water was flushing outside. So I had to, you know, go in there. I went to the uh, Home Depot a couple of times in order to get the proper tools back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually I fixed it. So one of the ways to really reduce your uh, costs really is just to try to do everything yourself if you can if you have the ability to. The second category is food and restaurants. Now, this is more interesting because before I was estimating how much I would typically spend. Now here, you actually have actual amounts that I actually did spend because I went to my credit card that I mainly only used on gas groceries and stuff. And then I looked at how much I spent at the grocery store in the month of August. I spent $196.50 on groceries. So it's actually lower than the $300 I estimated for um, in my previous videos. And my restaurant, you know, you figure I'm not going out to eat or anything, but I did. I go out and eat a little bit, just a little bit, and it added up to be $84.56 in there. You know, I also treated some people. I think total only went out like four or five times or something. Health insurance, it has ballooned up from, I remember something like $310 to $360 now. I think it's 366. Yeah, it's just gonna keep on increasing like that, I feel, for every single year. It's just gonna get more and more expensive. So going forward, I might actually look at a different way of paying for my health insurance because right now, a lot of people ask, hey, you know, you are self-employed. How do you pay for insurance? I actually pay full price, as you can see, $360. Once you retire or jump ship, or just kind of work on your own thing, you're gonna have to need to buy your own health insurance. And depending on your age, if you're like 50 or something, it might cost you $1,000. So this is uh, something that is in red for me because it's 
a high cost that I personally cannot really minimize other than if I get one of those Christian healthcare things that someone recommended me to get, which will be like $150 or something instead. It's sort of like this healthcare cost sharing thing where everybody pools their money together and if someone needs something done, um, your healthcare cost for everybody is gonna go up and down based on um, how much uh, they actually need to spend. So the amount will fluctuate, but not by much when you have a lot of people in this pool. My utilities here, water, I basically take very short showers. I don't really water my plants, so I get my water bill very low that way. The trash bill is only about $20, and your typical trash bill, I know for my neighbors, are $35 because I actually went and canceled my uh, landfill cart, and now I only use plastic bags. So when you add up the total cost for me every single year and then divide it by uh, the number of months, then I only spend $20. And I think a lot of people would not know this trick where you can actually cancel, you know, just, just get the lowest possible uh, service that you can. And I asked about this before. I had to like know that you can actually cancel it and get like uh, overfill bags instead. So sometimes even if you ask for the minimum service, they're not gonna come out right and tell you that, oh yeah, there's a cheaper option, but you know, only if you know the secret code word here, kind of like in and out. My gas and electric is pretty typical, uh, $53 or not typical because some people, they have a typical gas or electric at $100 or so. So what I do is just go around the house, I use my kilowatt meter thing and I just know pretty much how much electricity every single thing is consuming. You know, this light over here, I think it's like 13 watts per bulb. This thing over here is like probably in total 70 watts. My refrigerator is kind of like 150 watts every single hour, although it turns on and off. So just knowing where everything goes, just taking a look at all the vampire power and making sure you only plug things in when you're actually using them, then this saves a lot of electricity. My cell phone now has increased from $0 to $10 because now I use Mint Mobile. If you guys are interested, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. And I believe they're running this promotion where you can get six months for $60. So that's only $10 a month, exactly what I'm paying. You get eight gigabytes of LTE data on the T-Mobile network, although it's called Mint. For the gas electric, it's actually not $53 is actually closer to zero because when I participate in this thing called Ohm Connect, it actually negates my gas and electric bill because every single time they have an Ohm Connect uh, hour, right? It's these events where they would text you and then go, hey, you should turn off your electricity or like use a lot less during this one hour. Generally it's around six to 8 p.m. or so. So when I do this, the last time I did it, I got $2.92. And uh, if you sign up through my affiliate link, you'll get $10. Just add it to your account and you know, just free money over there just for starting this thing. By the way, it's only for California and Texas residents. I also don't have a landline and this has been going on for many, many years now. What if it's an emergency? Maybe, maybe you need it in an em emergency these days. But um, if you keep that lifeline, I guess, or landline, it's gonna cost you maybe $25 every single month. And I just, it's just something that I personally do not have. Maybe when it comes into a life or death situation where the cell phone towers are not working and I cannot use my cell phone, you know, because, you know, I have a heart attack or something, um, then I might regret this. So this is always like a thing for people that have a landline because, you know, those things would work um, even when you have a power outage. The next one is internet. I pay $50. Um, I get the roughly close to the lowest tier one and I think other people might get like uh, cable internet or something at $80. So all these utilities, you can see it's just only a tiny bit lower than the typical uh, consumer amount over here. So not crazy amount of savings. Here I'm gonna talk about my debt servicing, you know, all these kind of debts that you can have. Basically, I kill them off one after another. I systematically went after the smallest debt that I had, and then I just went higher and higher. For example, you know, I might have a little bit of credit card debt, you know, not, not things that I carry from month to month, but I can pay those off and then I can pay uh, the school loans off. And then once I had the school loan off, I go and attack the mortgage because that's the only thing I had left. So school loans, zero. I used to pay $400 every single month. Personal loan, I never got a personal loan, zero. Some people might have it for $100 a month. 
Uh, credit card debt, I never had credit card debt. Some people might pay $100 a month. This is probably a reasonable assumption. Uh, bank fees, this is an important one. Uh, I'm gonna cover some of these things that I personally don't pay for, but I feel like I should put it in here because so many people pay for bank fees and how do I avoid them? I basically, sometimes they have a minimum uh, balance requirement and I always have it uh, around there. If it's like $1,500 that you have to have in your checking account in order to have them waive their fee, for example, in the Bank of America checking account, it's like that. So I don't put only $1,500 in there. I have a little buffer room. I really leave like $2,000 in there so I can like spend you know a couple hundred in there and I won't have to worry about them uh, dipping below the average account balance because you know if it dips below uh, to let's say $1,400 just for one day and you normally only have $1,500 in there, then your average is gonna go down below $1,500 and all of a sudden you have to pay uh, the bank fee. Always make sure that you have enough money in there whenever it's withdrawn. So you need a good buffer amount of cash just, just sitting in there just so that you can avoid all those fees. Vehicle expenses here. I got car insurance, moped insurance, and I got these from Geico. I have a video on how to minimize your um, insurance. Basically, I just drove for a really long time. I have a very good record. You can get discounts in various ways and you have to ask for it. And if you raise your deductible, you also reduce your insurance costs. And if you only buy one way insurance, um, you also reduce your insurance costs because my car is so old. It's a 2001, um, 18 years old already. Uh, Porsche Boxster, 2001. It's basically valued at around $6,000 right now. So, you know, it's not worth it to insure it both ways anymore because if this car were ever to die, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna toss it away. Maybe I might not even get a brand new car, even if my current car, you know, goes puts or something. I might rent a car instead if I need to go somewhere that's farther than 10 miles. Then what my electric scooter can take me these days. I'm actually using that a lot more often um, in order to minimize my gasoline usage costs. Uh, car maintenance is only, I estimate, about $50. This is based on uh, five major work things I had to do on the car over the past 10 years. Uh, based on tires I have to buy, based on brake pads, it roughly averages to be about $50 every single month. And the way I get it down so low is I go in there, I'm not afraid of you know working on the car, so not every single person is gonna have this ability or time or inclination to do mechanical work. So uh, I estimate for a typical person, it might cost them twice as much because you have to pay for the labor fee if you ask a mechanic to do it for you. It's like $120 an hour and it adds up very quickly whenever you have a mechanic do work on your car. Uh, so gasoline, actual gasoline cost here for the month of August is only $43.50. I only filled up my gas one time this month. And it used to be probably maybe twice a month, but since I started using a scooter, uh, if it's somewhere close by, I even try to get my groceries with my scooter and a backpack now. So um, local stuff that's within 10 miles, I can now use my scooter, but maybe when winter comes, when it's really cold, maybe it's when it's raining, I will use my car more often. But right now, you know, it's a summer, you know, why not ride the scooter around? It's actually very nice. And uh, this has helped me to reduce my uh, gasoline usage a lot for the month of August and probably next month as well. Subscriptions. Now, I talk about Netflix, I don't have that. Cable, satellite, I don't have that. Gym, I don't have that. Now, how can I or you not get Netflix, cable, or satellite? Well, my way out is to get a library card. Now, this is something that I did not think I would ever do because Usually, if you go to a library, you have to get in your car, you have to uh, use gasoline to get there and then come back. So by the time you do this trip, it might have cost you a couple dollars in terms of gas, the maintenance cost of your car. But now that I have this electric scooter, I am able to go to the library essentially almost free. And that's one of the main reasons why I started using a library card. I just rented you know, a couple of Blu-ray uh, movies, I was able to watch it. So instead of getting Netflix, I borrow them from the library. Uh, instead of cable or satellite, I borrow from the library. Instead of the gym, 
I run outside instead. If you do not have Netflix, of course, you're not going to get all the, you know, mainstream shows and stuff. Uh, you can use a thing called Tubi. I use this on PS3 and uh, they have a lot of documentaries on there, which is the main stuff I watch because these days, whenever I watch just pure entertainment stuff, I feel like I'm wasting my time. So I rather watch documentaries where I'm actually learning about something. Now, the next few things are going to be somewhat interesting because I haven't talked about these all that much. Number one, personal care stuff, toothpaste. I started making my own toothpaste out of baking soda and uh, this little uh, carbon powder thing. I mix it together along with some essential oil. Soap is an interesting thing because you always think that, oh, you need soap. You need, you're always going to use soap. But for me going on to this minimalism thing, it turns out when I gathered up all the soap I have in the house, I have too much of it and I've been using it for like two years and you know, it's really hard for me to finish off, finish it all off. So it's taking a really long time. Toilet paper, whenever I buy a huge pack from Costco, it takes me a year to use it, which is, you know, $20, right? And one of the tricks I use very little toilet paper is because I have a bidet and yes, I would say it more than halves the amount of toilet paper that you use. It's a lot more sanitary, but I'm not going to keep on going on and on about that. I do use paper towels and essentially it's those half sheets, but then those half sheets, I tear them into quarter, a quarter of those half sheets. So it's actually an eighth of a sheet. Like whenever I eat, you know, you wipe your mouth just, just once it's, it doesn't really get all that dirty. So, you know, I only use the amount that I actually do use. If that makes sense, like why have the whole piece of paper towel if you're only going to use like uh, one square inch of it, right? So if you're only going to get one square inch dirty, only tear out a one square inch. I don't see how this is a degradation of quality of life because this is just using what I need to use. Some people might even say, Hey, why do you even need paper towels? Why don't you just use a cloth towel or something? Yes. Once I finish my paper towels, I probably will switch over to cloth towels or like, you know, whenever I get like to go food or something, I have some uh, paper napkins that comes with it. Yeah. Maybe I'll use those up first and then go back to uh, cloth napkins or maybe just save those for guests or something. Cleaners, detergents, those things is also something that I'm finding a very hard time to use up because once I went onto this minimalism binge, I stopped buying detergent for many years now. I stopped buying cleaning agents for many years because it's taking me such a long time to use up what I have. If you just kind of group up all the detergents that you have, you might have like two, three bottles, right? Just use them up first. Make sure you use it completely so it's all gone. And then you go back and you go, oh, I, I have zero detergent. So you have to go buy it. But because I wasn't a minimalist before. I just had a lot of duplicates of stuff. So it's taking me a long time to use my duplicates. Let's take razors for example, right? Razors is another thing I like to talk about because when I went on this dollar shave club thing, I actually got way too many. I think I have at least 20, 30 razors right now that I'm having a really hard time to use. And you know, my beard doesn't grow all that thick. So my razors last a really long time. So personal care I've spent close to zero the past two years. I just use up what I have versus a normal person probably pays maybe $10, maybe $20 every month buying, you know, new soaps buying new, um, body wash, shampoo, conditioner. I'm almost out of can, uh, shampoo conditioner, but, um, I also use very little shampoo and conditioner these days because I only wash my hair maybe once a week and shampoo it. So the rest of the time I just kind of like wash it with water and just kind of scrub it. And, um, you actually have to adjust to this so that, you know, your hair is not producing a lot of oils. And what used to happen for me is if I do not wash my hair every single day, it starts getting itchy, but now it doesn't really matter. It doesn't get itchy because it stopped producing so many oils because I stopped, uh, washing it every single day. Clothing. I also spent next to zero. Sometimes I would get clothes, but these were basically using coupons and stuff. And I basically get them for next to nothing. If you remember my sock video, I bought those Vermont socks, right? And, uh, basically about two pairs and I plan to use these for a lifetime. So I'd say about 25 cents every single month for socks, because if, and when they need to get replaced, 
I need to pay for shipping versus, you know, if you're just buying some cotton socks, it might cost you maybe a dollar a month because maybe one year you buy it one packet of 12 socks or something, it'll cost you $12. Clothing, like I said, I spent $0. A typical person spends maybe $200 because this is what I spent a long time ago. I had a budget and I thought that was, you know, that's a reasonable amount. I can buy, you know, two, three items every month and this is what I did. And now I have a huge cache of clothes and I'm trying to use them all up and it's taking me forever. So I don't think I'm going to need to buy clothes. Um, and it's actually a good thing whenever I wear a piece of clothing down and you know, it's completely worn off and I toss it away. I don't actually replace it. I just cheer that. Yay. You know, my whole closet, it's kind of shrinking a little bit because I actually don't want many, many pieces of clothing. I don't only need like five, five, 10 shirts or something. And, and that's all I need. I think this pair of jeans, you know, is the only active pair that I wear these days. Shoes. I haven't bought shoes for the last few years. I just been using the ones I have. A typical person might buy two pairs of shoes every year. So I count that at $20 every month. Uh, so every year you'll get $240 or so to spend $120 per pair. So this kind of makes sense for a typical person. Haircuts, $0. Does my hair look okay? I think it's a little weird right here. I need to fix it up a little bit, but um, I cut my own hair. I have a video on how to do this. And a typical person might spend maybe 20 to $50 for a haircut every single month. So this is an ongoing thing, but for me, it's an ongoing thing to cut my own hair. Um, it takes a little practice and, um, you know, if you're just starting out, you might mess up. So, you know, count on, you know, shaving it all off at least three or four times, because sometimes you're going to mess up and then you're going to have to wear a beanie or something, but this is just, you know, how it goes if you want to go learn to cut your own hair and when you don't have someone to experiment on. Trash bags. I don't buy trash bags. I just use the plastic bag that comes with your produce. They still give those away, so I use those. And uh, even if they cannot give those to me, I think I'll still survive because I throw most of my organics. I wrap them up in my junk mail and then I throw it in the organics cart. Alcohol. I basically stopped drinking alcohol um, unless it's social alcohol drinking. And even then, now I've really toned down my social uh, beer drinking as well. So basically I spend $0 on it and a typical person might spend $60. You know, I know some people that drinks a 12 pack of beer every single week or maybe more. So a 12 pack, maybe $15. So you have four of these, it's about $60 every single uh, month. Gadgets, fun money. This is an amount that I did not include before, which is $200. Now this is a lot of money every single month. If you add it up, it's about $2,400 every year. I would say that's probably a realistic amount for me to spend because sometimes I would buy a $400 camera. I might buy a bit of accessories or something. So, you know, this is a ballpark. I'm just guessing here. My travel and vacation, $300. So $3,600 can probably support um, two international trips, maybe this is probably a ballpark amount as well. And uh, girlfriend, a lot of people go, Oh yeah, you got, you're single. That's why you can save so much. So how much do I save? I'm estimating about $300 because sometimes when you go out, you need to treat your girlfriend to dinner or something. Sometimes you want to do something with your girlfriend. You want to go to a nice fancy trip. You have to uh, pay for uh, accommodations. You have to pay for tickets to somewhere you want to do things with your girlfriend. It's like a, like a happy thing to do. Right? So, um, think of this number as like a ballpark, right? It would depend on how much requirements your girlfriend have. Sometimes, you know, you don't have to pay too much. Maybe it's very, very equal. And you know, everybody is paying their own thing. Maybe sometimes you just want to treat your girlfriend because you can't always go, Oh no, you know, draw it down the line. You, you know, you pay for this, you play, you know, always split something. But a lot of times, whenever I talk to my friends, they are okay with going on vacation and maybe the boyfriend pays for certain things. Maybe they pay for accommodation. Maybe they pay for airplane tickets. It's like a rough thing, but maybe, uh, the guy, the male is paying the portion that's a little bit more than the female. And then the girl goes and, you know, pays for, uh, the restaurant bills and stuff like that. So don't take this $300 as an absolute. It will depend on the girl and your relationship and you know, how much 
how much money do you have to spend if you do have a girlfriend? And of course, probably if you have a girlfriend, you might end up going out a lot more once, twice, maybe every single day. Maybe you probably won't go out and eat out every single day. So this is also going to increase your own restaurant bill, right? You saw on my restaurant bill before $84.56. If you're going out as a couple, you could easily spend $84 just on one single uh, outing, right? So when you take all of this and look at the monthly costs, uh, if you strip out the $500 of uh, gadgets and vacation that I normally have, it would have been about $1,380. This is roughly what I spent before, but if you add in you know, my vacations, my crazy fun money that I typically spend, my estimate here, um, I'm really, not spending $14,000 every uh, year, it's really 22,000, you know, bleh, you know, around there. It's hard for me to keep track on my yearly spending, but you know, just, just kind of eyeballing it here. So for the typical person, I feel like I'm getting all these things as a typical person because for restaurants, I'm eating at home. I feel like I'm a lot more healthy eating at home. Yeah, sometimes you can go out because there are certain places you really want to go out just to try, right? So this is where I want to differentiate between needing to eat at restaurant versus you have some fancy restaurants that you're very interested in trying once. So this is a lot different because if you have the habit of going to some restaurant time after time just to eat, it might not be worth it because you're gonna end up spending a lot of money. So when you add up what a typical person might spend, having roughly the same life that I personally am, they're gonna spend around $4,571 every single month and every year is about $55,000. So this is my way of saying, okay, my standard of living is somewhere around here. It's arguable because you can go, well, you know, if you have Netflix, you don't have to like, ride your scooter to the library to get a movie. You don't have to use these things where you won't have access to the, you know, the fastest and the best entertainment and stuff. Well, to me, it hardly matters. It's because I'm still feeling that I am healthy about it and I'm getting, you know, a good amount of entertainment through all these different things. And I absolutely don't need um, you know, all this fancy clothing because, you know, this looks okay, right? You know, I have jeans, I, I'm clothed, I have socks, I'm wearing shoes, you know, I still have, you know, toothpaste because I'm making my own, I still use soap, I still use toilet paper, so all these things. I personally feel like my standard of living is probably around $55,000 a year, whereas I'm only spending $22,000 every year. So it's more about competing I'm okay if you want to compete on highest of standard of living while spending very little. You gotta remember that point. So this video is kind of long-winded, but I hope it gives you a lot of ideas on how to minimize your expenditure to this crazy level over here. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to give me a like. Check out my affiliate link down below for Kilowatt, Ohm Connect. What else is there? I don't know. There's other stuff down there if I remember. And as always, don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.